Welcome to a new lesson of the Haskell course. We are starting to get used to coding in Haskell and we are ready to get serious. In the next series of lessons, we'll learn how to manage our development environment, create Haskell projects, deal with errors, and solve problems in general. Basic skills every Haskell developer must have. This is the first lesson in the series, and it's a short one. We're going to set up our local development environment and compile our first program. There are several ways to install Haskell. We're going to use GHC app because it's the easiest one. Once we have GHC app, we're going to use it to install the Glasgow Haskell compiler, Cabal, Stack, and the Haskell language server. Strictly speaking, we only need GHC. But throughout these lessons, you will see how these other tools makes our lives way easier. Finally, we're going to install a couple of VS Code extensions to have locally the same environment we provide for you remotely. If you happen to use Vim or Emacs, don't worry, there are amazing plugins available for you as well. Once we have our development environment ready, we're going to create our first program. We are going to write a simple Hello World Haskell program, and we are going to compile it and run it as an executable. Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, so here we have a clean Linux machine. The only thing I did so far is to install Firefox and VS Code. And we are going to use this to demonstrate how to install your Haskell tooling. Although you can use the same steps to install Haskell in Mac OS and Windows. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is to go to Firefox and go to haskell.org. We go to the get started button. And here we see that the first step is to use GHC app to install all the Haskell tooling and then use an editor to integrate the Haskell tooling and make it easier to use. The most recommended one is VS Code because it's nowadays the industry standard, but you can use any editor. If you use Vim or Emacs, you can integrate the Haskell tooling same as you integrate any other language tooling. So if we go to GHC app, we'll see that we need to copy this command in the case you're using Windows, you will see another command that is this one to install on Windows. You just have to copy this one and open a terminal. Make this a bit bigger. Paste this, hit enter. Welcome to Haskell. This script can download and install the following binaries. The first one is GHC app, the Haskell toolchain installer, the one that we are actually running right now. So the only thing that GHC app does is to install, uninstall, and manage your Haskell tooling. That's it. Besides that, it can install GHC, the compiler of Haskell, and then can install Cabal or Stack or both, which are build tools to better manage your Haskell software. And finally, you can install the Haskell language server, HLS, which will help catch errors and suggest better ways of doing things. So let's hit enter. Do you want to add GHC up to our path? Yes, of course, because we want to use it. Do you want to install Haskell language server? The default is no, so we have to write Y and hit enter. Do you want to enable better integration with GHC app? Blah, blah, blah. Yes, I do. And now GHC app is telling us, hey, these are the system requirements that I need to make sure our Haskell tool in general functions correctly. So you can just hit enter and try it. Maybe it will work. But to make sure it will work, we can copy these requirements, cancel with Control C, and install all those libraries. Depending if you are using Mac OS, you can do brew install and paste everything. On Windows, I have no idea. 
in Ubuntu, we can say sudo apt get install. There you go, the password. And that's it. We have everything installed. So we can run ghc out again. Same command we used before. Yes, please install. Yes, please install. I do want to use Haskell language server. I do want to use, what was this? Okay, an integration with tag and GC app. Yes, I do. I want everything. I don't want to struggle with anything. Do everything yourself, please. Thank you. Please ensure the following packages are installed. We already ensure that, so we can hit enter. And now we have to wait for a bit. It's installing GHC 9.2.5, the compiler. And that's it. It took a couple of minutes, but now it's done. We cannot use GHC up yet because we have to restart the shell. GHC up is not found. So if that happens to you, don't worry. It's because you have to use a new shell. Let's close the previous one. And if we open, make it a bit bigger. Now, to see what you just installed, you can do GHC up. Terminal user interface, hit enter. And here, let's make it a bit smaller. There you go. So, as you can see, it tells us the version, the, it's the latest, and if it's the recommended one. We also have stack, a build tool. We'll talk about this in a minute. We also have our Haskell language server. Cabal, we we'll also talk about Cabal in a minute. And finally, GHC. So we have all the tools installed. In case you want to install, uninstall, or change versions, you can see here, you can move with the arrows and you have all these options. You can easily change between versions, uninstall and uninstall things. Okay, so I want to uninstall everything. Don't worry. You can say ghc app noop and it will uninstall everything. You can see here in the help command, nuclear command, nuke, completely remove ghc app. And of course, it will also remove everything it installed. So your machine will be clean as if we didn't install anything. So, Let's close this and open Visual Studio Code. The first thing we want to do is to install extensions. The extensions help Visual Studio Code integrate better and give us more tools, more help as developers. If we go here to the extensions panel and we search for Haskell, Haskell language support, install. And syntax highlighting install. This one I believe is not necessary because HLint comes with the Haskell language server. So with these two, we are ready to go. Let's close this, go to files, open folder, and let's create Haskell project and open the project. I'm the one who created this folder, so yeah, I trust the author. Close the welcome. And there you go. We are ready to start coding. This setup is virtually the same as the one we use in the remote environment. So feel free to keep using that if you prefer. Okay, so let's actually write and compile our program. We create a new file called main.hs, which is because it's my main file. And here Visual Studio says, okay, you're using a Haskell file. How do you want the extension to discover the Haskell language server? We can say, just use the one GHC app uses. And that's it. So 
let's write a simple program. We are going to create the main action that is equal to put string here. The language server provides completion. So perfect. Put string line, hello world. And now we can save the file, control S. We can open a terminal and use GHC to actually compile this program. Notice that we are inside the Haskell project. So the file we just wrote is inside this directory. We can show it here. So we can say GHC and write the name of the file and GHC will compile our Haskell code and generate three files. Main.hs is our source code, the file we created. And then main.o is an object file and main.hi is an interface file that will link the object file to the libraries that come with GHC to produce an executable. We don't really care about all those things now. The one thing we care about is this file. This one is the actual executable, the program we created, a binary that we can run like any other program. So now we can run this program by writing its name and hitting enter. There you go. We compiled and ran our own Haskell program. Congratulations. Of course, because GHCI comes with GHC, we can also enter GCI, GCI, and load main, and then use the main action to get the same results. But inside GCI, it's not that exciting. And that's it for today. As homework, try to install the development environment in your local computer, and maybe start working on there. Of course, if for any reason, lack of resources or whatever, you cannot install locally, don't worry, you can still use the remote development environment. Happy coding!